Welcome to the BioPython Project Update 2020. This talk has been pre-recorded for the BOSC track at the Bioinformatics Community Conference. My name is Peter Koch, but I am presenting this on behalf of the BioPython contributors. BioPython represents 20 years of open source work volunteered by the community, with 278 named contributors and counting. The various modules let you do computational biology in Python. It's open source, cross-platform, and freely available. BioPython, the other bio projects, the Bioinformatics Open Source Conference BOSS, and the Open Bioinformatics Foundation all date from the same period. I'll start with a review of recent work. We've had three releases since the last BOSS conference. We've adopted the black Python code formatting style and dropped Python 2 support. Both changes should make life easier for the maintainers and new contributors. You can run the tool black to reformat your code into a consistent style. Writing Python 3 only code is easier for the programmer, but also reduces our test matrix. I'd like to single out a couple of new bits of functionality. The first is fast and flexible pairwise alignment under the BioAlign module. This is written in C and can be as fast as aligners in standalone C or C++ programs, maybe faster with many sequences. It also isn't restricted to just aligning pairs of strings. You can align three-letter amino acid sequences, codons, or arrays of integers. Adding new file formats to BioPython happens relatively often, but the GCG MSF multiple sequence alignment parsing is unusual because it was externally funded. So a special thank you to America's National Marrow Donor Program. This is my favorite slide in the talk. We've had 39 named contributors in the last year, 16 of whom are newcomers. That's about the same as previous years, which is good. It's also incredibly international. However, like much of bioinformatics, we still have a diversity problem here. We could do more, which brings me to my next slide. Having a formal code of conduct can encourage minority participation. Speaking as both a BioPython developer and current president of the OBF, I'm hopeful we will have adopted a code of conduct later this year. The OBF has organized an informal birds of a feather session during this conference to discuss the proposal. I'll now talk briefly about changes in the upcoming release. As announced last year, we're saying goodbye to the BioAlphabet module. Most internal usage has already been removed, and I'll now summarize the main user-facing changes. The sequence objects will no longer track the alphabet attribute, making them act like a Python string object with additional biological methods, and less overhead than before. We will instead record the molecule type as needed in the annotated set record object. We recognize this will require some changes to end users' code. That's the main reason we delayed making changes to this area of BioPython for so long. We aim to document this clearly and minimize disruption. In this final section, I'll talk about ongoing and future work. Three years ago, we started dual licensing our code under the three clause BSD license. We need the permission of all the copyright holders and have been checking the files one by one. We're now up to 80% of the main code base. I said this last year, but I urge anyone starting a new project to pick a standard open source license as early as possible. The next three slides all have automation as a common theme. I believe this is more important the bigger a project gets. We use continuous integration to run unit tests and style checks. Following mainstream Python style guides should make it easier for new contributors to work on our code base. Often issues only show up when a pull request is made so we're hoping to expand our git pre-commit checks to preempt that. Continuous integration also builds our API documentation and publishes it on our website. This has streamlined our release process, but building the main tutorial is still quite tedious. Converting that from LaTeX to RST markup would let us integrate it all under Sphinx. Automating building compiled wheels and conda packages made it possible for a new contributor to handle a release. Thank you, Chris. Thank you to all our contributors to date, and not just code fixes, but also bug reports and other feedback. Thank you to the various organizations that have supported our work directly or indirectly.